Hey guys, this is the Cooler Master Master Liquid Atmos 360 AIO. Cooler Master says this is the most forward looking cooler with a brand new dual chamber pump and three 120mm sicker flow edge ARGB fans. So, how does this cooler actually perform? Let's find out. This Atmos 360 comes in both black and white, and it also has a 240mm variant also in black and white. Cooler Master has also put in extra effort towards eco friendliness in both the packaging as well as. As the cooler itself. Right off the bat, everything just feels more premium. No more right side opening, but we have a nice sleeve and shoebox design. On the inside, everything is just more organized. There are three boxes here, labeled Intel, Accessories, and AMD. And yes, there's much less plastic. Sure, there still are plastic bags in each of these boxes, but the radiator as well as the pump no longer have bags. Do take care of these cardboards then, because they are the only thing protecting your cooler should you ever need to repack this AIO. So what's inside each of these boxes? The Intel one contains the standoff screws for Intel LGA 1700 and 1200, a pair of Intel mounting brackets for the pump head, and the back plate for the motherboard. For AMD, there are standoff screws and mounting brackets. There's no back plate for AMD because this cooler uses the same back plate that comes with each motherboard. There's more stuff inside the accessories box. So let's take a look. If you want the detailed manual, you can scan the QR code on this card. Probably another way to save paper, although there's a hard copy of the warranty. We also have the screws to mount the cooler inside your PC case, the nuts to screw the pump head onto the CPU, and the screws to mount the AMD and Intel brackets onto the pump head. There's the PWM fan splitter cable, and I think these are clips for the tubes. Cooler Master has also packed their cryo fuse thermal paste inside this AIO. And finally, we have the LED controller and the cables to connect it to the motherboard. I believe this is the highest end ARGB controller box Cooler Master has, and you can use it if you want to use the master control software to sync this AIO with other Cooler Master products. This is optional because you can still control the lighting of this cooler using the 5 volt ARGB header on your motherboard together with software such as ASUS Aura Sync, MSI Mystic Light, etc. But more on that later. The radiator has a nice textured finish and what looks to be a good thin density. For the tubes, it has a good length from the radiator to the pump head. It is braided and is more flexible than the PL360 Flux. Which brings us to the pump head. It is a dual chamber head with a pump speed of 3300 RPM plus minus 10%. The tubes connected to the pump head can move almost flat but do not stay flat. It is less stiff than the flux in this aspect but does not stay flat entirely. Do you know you can customize the pump head with your own 3D designs? Go to printerpost.com and you can either download designs from there or create your own designs. You print out the 3D designs and apply them here. There's a sticker on the copper plate to tell you to grease and remove it, which I will show you how in the next part of the video. The three fans on the radiator are Cooler Master Sickle Flow Edge 120mm ARGB fans. Each of these fans have a speed of 650 to 1800 RPM with an airflow of 62 CFM. And each fan has its own 4 pin PWM and 5 volt 3 pin ARGB wires. Cooler Master has preset this cooler in such a way that the tubes will be on the left, and you can see the wires route to the back in this way. They say it's the most optimal position, but I myself prefer the tubes to be on the right. How do you feel about this? You can write down in the comments below. Well, the plus point is you can save time and effort screwing the fans onto the radiator. Installing this Atmos 360 is pretty straightforward. I would say it is easier than the Flux. Because I'm going to test this AIO with a Ryzen 7700X, I'm going to show you how to install this cooler for AMD CPUs. Step 1. Open the AMD box. Find the packet that says 2 times AMD bracket. These AMD brackets will go onto the pump head. There is only one way for the bracket to go in, so if yours do not go in on the first try, just flip them around. The brackets should slide in nicely, but for some reason, mine feels a bit stiff. Use the 4 small screws that come in the back and screw them onto the 4 holes. There is no need to over tighten them, just screw them to the point where the brackets no longer move. You have to remove these socket brackets on the motherboard. Hand screw these 4 AMD screws onto these 4 screw holes. You can see that one side has a thicker threading than the other. The thicker threads go onto the motherboard. Remember to just tighten with your fingers. Time to apply some thermal paste. Remember the sticker with the pattern? Okay, I think that was too much. <laughs>
Once you have applied your thermal paste, spread it with either a spatula or the hot card with the QR code. Make sure to cover all of the hexagons. And now peel off the sticker from the copper plate. If you have done correctly, you should see sort of nice hexagons on the copper plate. I'm not sure if you can reuse this sticker after this because I made quite a mess as I did not get A for art. <laughs> If that is too much work, you can always use the trick in the thermal paste book. Just apply an X over the CPU's IHS. I swapped to the Arctic MX4 here, which I think is easier to work with and is to make a fair comparison for the other coolers that I plan to compare with. Time to put the pump head over the CPU. You will have to turn the pump head a bit to align the pump brackets with the AMD screws. Use the nuts provided to tighten the head down. Like earlier, use your fingers to tighten. Apply the screws in a cross pattern and also tighten in a cross pattern. To wire the fans, use the fan splitter. This part goes to the CPU header on your motherboard and you can plug these three PWM cables onto these female fan adapters. To turn on the beautiful colors, simply connect these three pin cables together. The last open wire goes to one of your 5V ARGB headers on your motherboard. For the pump, the PWM cable goes to either the pump header on your motherboard or if you don't have one, the CPU optional header on your motherboard. For the pump's ARGB cable, you can either daisy chain it with the fans or if you have multiple ARGB headers like I do here, you can plug them separately. You are done. Just power on your PC and see it come alive. You can tune the fans using your motherboard's BIOS or change the colors using softwares like ASUS Aura Sync or MSI Mystic Light. If you want to control the cooler's lighting with Master Plus or Master Control, you will have to use the provided LED controller. Instead of daisy chaining the three pin ARGB leads with each other, Wire them up with the ARGB splitter cable. Connect this part of the SATA cable to the box and a main SATA connector to a SATA rail on your power supply. And with this USB cable, connect the mini USB to the box and a main USB to a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. And before I forget, if you're going to put this cooler inside a case, you will have to bend the CPU cable so that you can route the wires to the back of your case. I initially thought it will affect the leads in the splitter, but I think some fold is okay. Cooler Master has also provided some accessories to manage your wires. These are clips to clip the tubes together, and these are covers to make sure the three pin leads don't come loose when you use the ARGB splitter for the control box. Going up against the PL360 Flux in Cinebench R23, you can see that the Atmos 360 does a good job to bring the 7700X's temperature to slightly below 90 degrees C. The room is kept at about 24 degrees C, so with the Atmos 360, the 7700X sees a temperature difference or delta of 65 to 70 degrees C. But one thing to note, the Secret Flow H fans do produce a lot of noise. Plus, I have lowered the fan speeds to 1500 RPM to reduce the noise. I'm also curious to see how much of a performance loss there would be at 1500 RPM. Three days later. There's actually not much of a temperature difference. So you may be thinking, how is this Atmos 360 actually better? The Atmos 360 pushes the 7700X to run at a higher frequency compared to the PL360 Flux. There's almost a 200 MHz difference between the two AIOs, with the Atmos pushing more than 5.1 GHz out of the box. Well, the good thing is, there's not much of a performance loss between the two AIOs when you reduce the fans to 1500 RPM. We see the same result with the CPU's load power. The higher speed on the 7700X also gave a much higher power draw when testing with the Atmos 360. The 7700X has a TDP of 105 watts, which we all know is on paper so it's not surprising to see it hit almost 140 watts during actual loads. Okay, as for the lighting control, this cooler does not work with Master Plus. At least, it is not in a compatible list. However, this cooler does work with Master Control. It can be buggy at times. Sometimes it detects the cooler, other times it may not detect the cooler, and I will need to restart the software so that Master Control can detect this Atmos 360. So when it works, when you turn on Master Control, it gives you information such as the CPU temperature, as well as the various lighting options that you have on this cooler. If you have connected the RGB lighting correctly, you should see all RGB ports 1 to 4 connected. To proceed, you click on devices and you should see LED controller A1. From there, you can control each fan lighting, the pump's lighting, and what's cool, the lighting on the inside of the pump. And yes, because you can control each part individually, you can have any combination of lighting that you want. You can see that I set the middle fan to rainbow, the other two to some other dazzling 
modes such as refill and whatever re space, uh, you can create a very wacky Atmos 360 color design. And also you may be wondering, can you change all of the lighting at once? Well, it's supposed to if it works. When I click on sync all and change to another color mode, nothing seems to change. So yes, this is a pretty good cooler, even though the temperature delta on this Atmos 360 does not differ much to the PR360 flux because you get similar temperatures but at a much higher boost clock and a much higher PPT. It's telling you that it's pushing the 7700X to perform much better even at similar temperatures, which is always a good thing because you are getting more out of the CPU. Besides the performance, I'm still not a fan of using the LED controller box because there's too many wires to manage and the master controls software is still pretty buggy, but when it works, you can have a pretty snazzy looking cooler setup. I also prefer to use software such as Asus Aura Sync to control the lighting on this cooler, even though I will not be able to control each individual part's lighting. For warranty, at least for Singapore customers, Cooler Master has gave this cooler 5 years warranty. I'm not sure about the other regions, so keep that in mind should you ever want to buy this cooler. Okay, so if you like my review of this MOS 360, make sure to smash the thumbs up button. I'm also very happy to mention about the forward-lookingness and the eco-friendliness that Cooler Master brought with this cooler and for whatever designs that they plan to launch in the future. So thank you for watching and make sure to come back to my channel.